Hi, I'm Keith Cotter and welcome to the HSB Academy tutorial session. In this session, we're going to learn about roof elements and how you frame them. We're going to see that when you frame a roof element, it automatically determines connections between the roofs. So those complex connections such as on a ridge or on a hip or a valley will be automatically calculated based on your connection details. What you're also going to see is how essentially you can split up that roof that you've created and create a number of roof elements and then how the connection is automatically determined between these roofs. And finally, how you can modify each of those roof elements to uniquely to the way that you may wish to detail that particular roof. So let's jump in. Let's take a look and see how we do this. Okay, let's, the first thing we're gonna do is create a roof. And I'm just using a standard template from Revit. I'm gonna create a roof, maybe roughly uh, 10 meters by six meters. And what we'll do is we'll accept it. And then what I'm gonna do is edit that footprint and maybe make this a slope of 30 degrees and it results in a roof shape something similar to what i have here which has a pitch on three sides at the moment and uh, what i'm also going to do is add in a wall underneath to act like a, a knee type wall and uh, maybe one last step i'm going to attach the wall to the roof as well so the resultant is as such um a roof like this where i'm just going to turn on the shading to make it more apparent and give me this type of roof okay so what i have shown you at the moment is nothing special it's just simple revit geometry uh, of a roof and a wall now we're going to take a look at hsb design and roof elements so the first thing you'll notice is we do have a new ribbon called hsb roof element and it has a number of different commands in it the first of these that we're going to use is the divide roof command and the reason we have to use that is because when you define a roof in revit it is all in one and for roof elements we know that these are individual to each side in this particular case so in this particular case we're going to use under hsb roof element we're going to, get to use the command divide roof i'm going to select the roof and finish it and you can now see that it has here each roof um, split on each side so that's the first step that we have the next thing that we need to do is on each individual roof element then we need to split them up why because this cannot be manufactured as one because if you manufactured that as one you wouldn't be able to transport it so we would need to split it up into more manageable sizes for manufacturing to do that we use model line and here i'm going to use a model line and the first model line i'm going to create is down through this ridge here now when you're creating a model line i like you to be able to extend the model line beyond the extremities of the model in this particular instance <clears throat> so i'm also going to use another model line here and create this one and i'm going to extend this down to here as well and then we're going to make a copy of this and uh, maybe i'm going to stretch it out 2.4 which is roughly about an average that a, a cassette is this one is slightly larger than 2.4 so it's quite a an odd shaped panel just slightly overhanging on this particular instant so now we have our model lines created what we now need to do is we need to split up this roof element. So starting off with this particular roof element, you can see here we have a command called split roof of which I created. And then I say select create split line. And I then pick my lines in question and say finish. And um, once I have that done, you can see it gives a preview of how it's gonna split it. And then I accept it. And you now see that essentially it has split this roof up into individual components in this case. So we continue to do exactly the same step on each of the roofs. So I select the roof, I can split it. I can say select create split, pick the model line, finish it and accept it. 
and you now see it accepts that. And once more, we go split roof, pick this roof here, click split line, pick those, finish it, and accept the split in this case. Did that slightly wrong in that uh, I should have picked this particular roof. I picked the other one by mistake. So once more, we can pick it again, select split line, take this, finish it, and we do this side and accept it. And you can now see it has split up the roof into components, which are all individual in each of these cases here. So once we have each of the elements now split, what we now need to do is add item containers. And what's an item container? It's here. And an item container is like an envelope that's around the roof element. And when we see in the next session where I will cover detail editing, how I define the edges for the roof, how I define the connections between each of the roof, it's the roof item container is what is fundamentally the boundary of that roof element and it is the determining factor of how the connection detail works. So we have to attach roof elements to each, or sorry, item containers to each of these roofs. So we go here and I'm going to select these particular uh, roof elements. I'm going to finish and you can now see it creates a numbered roof pattern which is uh, an item container and the arrow here signifies the direction of the span that you want the roof to go if you weren't happy with the direction of the span for example if you wanted to go from left to right selecting the roof and editing the footprint which is standard revit functionality will allow you to switch the span of this particular roof in this case but for now i'm going to leave it uh, running from uh, top to bottom in this particular case. So once more, we go back here to item container. I pick the two roofs, I go finish, and you can see it adds it here. And last but not least, we do item container once more and select this and finish it. And we now get our item containers on this side. So we're all good to go. We have everything set up. We have our item containers in. We have split the main roof up by dividing it. And then we split the individual roof element uh, into individual um, components that are manageable for manufacturing. So the next step that we need to do is a framing style. And in my next session, I will show you how I set up a particular type of framing style. And if I go here to my framing style editor, you will see here I already have a framing style set up and I already have connections set up and I'm going to use those in this presentation but in the next session I'm going to show you how I set all of these up so for now I'm just going to say okay and one last step that I need to do before I generate the framing is I must use what's called match framing styles and this allows me to take the architectural roof I define and match it in with a certain framing style that I want to use, and then I can save it. So basically it has now matched the framing style to the Revit roof. So we're all good to go. So all I now need to do is generate the roof and select all the item containers and finish it. And you will now see the resultant roof element is created and you can see it is framed with each. So down here you can see I also had a knee wall and I'm also now just going to go to the stick frame uh, ribbon and I'm going to attach an item container here to this and I'm going to finish it. And one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the item container so that it's on the other side of the roof and uh, we come back here and we're going to I'm going to turn this into wireframe to show you what I have so you can see I have the item container of the wall here and we're going to generate those two roofs again so 
So this is our final result of the framed roof. If I go back here to level one, and for the purposes of showing you the final result, I'm going to create a section through this roof. Let's take go view. And you will now see that here, it has created the connection between the knee wall and it has also created here the connection on the ridge of the roof. So if we go back up here to our 3D view and take a look at this on top view, there is one last thing that you might want to do and that is you can see here at the moment that this particular roof has started the distribution of the joists from this side, for example, whereas you might say uh, this is good. But here you can see it has started it from this side and ran it up here. Whereas in a real world, you would probably want to start the distribution from a straight edge. So i.e. you would want it to go from this side. Well, you can do that because what I can do is I can select the item container and then go here to the detail modifier. And this will allow us to modify our roof element. This is the detail modifier box and what I'm now going to do is go to the zone. I'm going to pick this particular zone and you can see it's generating from the left distribution. I'm going to say generate from the right distribution. I say OK and finally what I then do is I now go to my roof element, generate select the item container and finish and you will now see the result will be different. It now generates the roof coming from the other direction of distribution. So all in all, you can now see that from a shaded result and just to really finalize this, what I'm now going to do is go to my roofs and turn off roofs and I'm going to turn off wall. It's okay. And you can now see that we now have our final result of our roof showing the detailing that I've used plus the detailing of how the wall connects to the roof itself. So as I said, in the next session, I'm going to show you how I detail these particular connections and the connection with the knee wall, and this will complete this process. But for now, you have now learned how you can frame a roof and how you can set it out and split it up and finalize the actual result of total framing of the roof element. I'm Keith Cotter. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in future sessions.